Well, welcome back to Luke World Auto Services. Today, it doesn't sound as bad on the bench as it does in the car. But it sounds pretty bad, so we're going to take this alternator apart. This is from the uh, Blue Nova. Take this thing apart, we're going to put new bearings in it because they just sound horrible in the car. So, and it's something I can do while I'm sitting down. My knee's feeling pretty good. I'm getting around pretty well on it. Actually, extremely well, according to my physical therapist. And I'm actually able to get up and not really have much discomfort in the mornings now, too. Let's pull. I think it's a toy four. I don't remember. Just a second. We'll be right back. Since I'm still in injured reserves, I was doing some work maintenance on my lawnmower for the shop. For the home. Take it back and forth. Ooh, that's gonna hurt me. Got it. And uh, I decided I got tired of my tires going flat on the, on the mower, so I got some flat out. Fiber Force Technology tire sealants in one of these bags in each of the back tires and one of these bags between the two front tires. And it has a fluid film with particles that seals your, your air leaks up on your mower tires. I'm like, all right, I'm going to give them a try and see how that works. it will probably rust the, uh, the wheels out in time, but so be it. I guess you could have worse things happen. At least it won't be driving around on flat tires. Luckily, I had a pretty straightforward weekend. I took it easy. On Friday, I drove over to Millfield, something like that. South of Dayton, it's about an hour and a half drive. Took the roll back over and picked up a 2000 GMC Jimmy that was in op. Beautiful rust free truck, about 140 some thousand miles on it, but picked it up for the right price. It has a. It was in op because somebody did an intake on it and they broke something on the distributor and couldn't figure out how to put the distributor back in correctly. So we brought it back and because I don't. Because, because I have trust issues, I we pulled the intake off and they did it wrong. So we're doing the intake manifold gasket over to make sure that it's done correctly. So I got my housing here and my eyelet there. Anyway, it's a really nice blazer. Basically, it was a one owner car. You could call it that, I suppose. been the two owners since the original owners and they've done nothing but screw it up. That bearing feels all right. We're going to replace it anyway. This alternator is $700. So I decided we're going to put new bearings in it and see if that quiets down because it sounds horrible on the car. Just absolutely horrible. Should just pull out. What'd you do, Richard? Nice alternator, it's serviceable. It's not soldered together. Oops, just throw that in there. Get 
this armature out of my way. Winding. That will allow me to get my big mitts in there. There's the brain of the alternator. I need my drill bit. Or a pin. I don't have anything handy. Let me grab a drill bit and I'll be right back. So your spring goes in. And then your brush goes in. brushes look pretty good, all things considered. Put a drill bit in to hold it. These bushes, these bushings haven't even worn through the, the eyelet. I'm going to need a different pair of pliers or a smaller pair of fingers. What did you watch today? Oh, I watched Rich fight with an alternator brush. Sounds exciting. It's not. Pair of those pliers. Hey, I win. Slippery little sucker. Push your breath. Now your brushes are held into the piece with a drill bit to pull out and put it all back together. But, I just gotta figure out why this thing is making so much noise. Big one. This thing's not even that old. I don't think there's going to be anything I can do to fix this. I don't know if you can see that, but there's distortions on the shaft, and that's going to be what's making our noise. There's a bearing in there, it's just a needle bearing. I'm not sure I can drive it out. Uh, you know what? That's the bearing number there, so I can get a bearing coming for it. I'll try to polish the shaft, put a new bearing in it, and we'll uh, see if that'll get us what we need. Use my magnifying glass in my pocket. 06604. 06604. ECH, MCAM, ECH. Okay, needle roller, $10. It's not making any noise, but I'm going to replace it anyway. Well, it's a 62030. Oh, I should probably just order a bunch of those. Let me say 62030. Bearing. That's not it. That looks like it. If it didn't need one before, it needs one now. Polish this shaft and see if I can. And that's gonna take a lot of it out. It's got a pretty good groove in it. How's that happen so fast? Especially considering it has grease in it. I have to do that 
differently. I don't want to break the back of the case. I can support it right there. I'll get a better hit. What do I have? It's uh, just about that size. Probably a socket. Like one inch. I don't think I have anything handy. the culprit of our damage right there buddy it's packed full of grease it's really weird that that would cause that failure well I guess I'm gonna have to order some parts for that so I guess I'll get some bearings ordered for that I'll polish the shaft on that uh, armature and see if I can save it. Hopefully I don't need to find a new armature for it. But I'll show you the blazer I picked up this weekend. She needs a grill and a bumper. But for an old 2000 blazer, like, that's pretty impressive that it still has rockers and no rust. And a dash, it's not cracked. And it's not disgusting inside, because most of these things are disgusting. But this is a nice four-wheel drive unit. Exterior spare tire carrier. I have the cover in the back of the truck. Got to figure out a way to restore these, these guys, because they're all faded like that. This one's not really that bad, but this one's a little worse. There's got to be something we can put on that to bring those back. I suppose I could sand it and paint it, but it's a rubber seal, so... <clears throat> Again, no rust to speak of. Which is nice. Most of these are just destroyed. <clears throat> it's got one dent right there I'm going to have to see if I can push out from the back side. Nice clean lenses. Uh, I did not know that these had roller rockers in them. Apparently the 2000 and up 4.3s have roller rockers. I thought that was cool. <clears throat> so I guess that's going to make these heads more desirable to people when they're upgrading their trucks. Like if you're doing one of these, I would totally use the newer heads. So that's my new uh, fixer-upper. Let me get these parts ordered for this alternator. I'll chuck this up in the lathe and see if I can improve it. Or see if there's a repair for that. There might be, but I don't know what it is. Got a heck of a groove in it. Bummer. But that's my noise. I told you it sounded like something was coming apart in there. <laughs> Well, sadly, our country is falling apart. Um, I think I determined what the cause of the failure was on this. Um, this bearing is horribly cooked, and the shaft is horribly cooked. And I was looking at it, and if you look over here, you have signs of uh, ground shorts. So more than likely, there is a tab right here with a bolt on it that comes off the back of the case, and that is supposed to have a ground wire that goes to a secure ground. Um, more than likely, even though it's bolted to the block, this alternator case was not ground correctly, so electrolysis happened and it was arcing back and forth between both bearings. Because um, you've got burning here and then you've got actual metal transfer here. So. Sadly, the places I normally buy auto electric from, there was a place I was recommended, Chandler Automotive in Arizona. They're closed. JN Electric, where I used to buy all my alternator parts from, they're closed. 
Uh, I was able to find the stator and a bearing kit online through eBay. I've got them coming. It's about a hundred bucks. They'll be here in a few days. And we'll put this alternator back together. We'll put it back on the car. We'll make a few more runs with it. Um, because I did make a change to the yellow pump cam and I'm interested to see how it operates with that. And then from there, uh, we should be ready to release that car back to the customer and let them go tear up the streets with it. Um, we've actually got a pretty nice batch of weather here. I'm um, sorry to hear you guys in California are getting hammered with weather. Hurricane force winds, that doesn't happen ever. Um, but hopefully you guys out in California will make it through this mess of a winter and uh, move on to bigger and better things. I suppose on a good note, the amount of rain you guys are getting, maybe Lake Mead will fill back up. Um, and then they just need to not, you know, drain the lake all the way. So anyway, um, yeah, electrolysis was the cause of our failure on this brand new alternator because it was not grounded. So make sure you ground your alternator cases out there in the world with that. Uh, I'm going to go get some lunch and then I'm going to put something else to back together because that's what I do. Uh, click like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you guys on the next one. Stay safe out there. Keep on trucking. Actually, really nice alternator. Bummer.